welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ uh, for this uh, day session, hoping that all of you are doing well and you are all happy to be with us at this time uh, of the morning. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much. So we are going to start our lesson today and you've already seen the scripture we're going to read. But before we do that, let us pray. Our most gracious, loving, heavenly Father, we come for that presence again. Indeed, it's the amazing grace that, oh, Father, we were not worthy, but it's only by thine grace that we have come in, Lord. We thank you. We rededicate ourselves to you, Father. May you come and take control of every one of us, oh, Father, teach us learners, parents, and everyone, our Father, we commit all children to you, Lord. Come and speak with us, for it is in Jesus' name I pray and believe. Amen. Hello. Yes. So today we are going to continue with the lesson we had the other time. And I think I've done this purposely because I just want to see how many of you still remember what we had the other time. Yes, so just sit ready. And please, if you are two or three, just look at those who are not participating. Today, we're going to participate, right? I just want to uh, take the approach of our precious brother, Molly, that, uh, you know, questions are good. Who loves questions? Oh, most of you hate questions. No, questions are good. And revision is good just to see whether you got what we were talking about the previous time. So today, uh, as we have seen, uh, we're going to read in the book of Exodus, chapter 33, verse 20. I hope you found that scripture. And he said, who is this? This is God. And he said, Thou canst not see my face. You cannot see my face. For there shall no man see me and live. Wow. So that is God. God is saying, you can never see my face. And he's talking to a prophet. And this was Moses. So Moses wanted to see God. Wow. You heard the questions that our precious brother Marcel was handling about SAS. Can we see God? Everyone wants to see God. And we realize that if you want to see something, it means that thing is not there. It's there, but you are not seeing it. Or if it's somebody, you're looking for someone, and maybe you don't know the person, you might actually be seeing him, but you don't know him, or you're not seeing him at all. So you're saying, can I see you, God? Can I see you, God? And then God told Moses, where? God said, thou canst not see my face. Hawezi kuona uso wangu. For there shall no man see me and live. Imagine, just seeing God. Okay, I think we'll look into that later. But now, are you ready? Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, let's do a recap here uh, where we were the other Sunday. Uh, just a few questions, not really to examine you, but just to bring you to speed about what we learned the other time. Someone is already reading the questions. Okay, what was our lesson or topic? What was our topic the previous Sunday. A, Abraham and Eve in the Garden of Eden. B, for ball, the fall. C, God sent away, God was sent away by Abraham, Adam from the Garden of Eden. Wow. God was sent away by Adam from the Garden of Eden. And D, God hiding from man. Which one? Don't talk, don't talk, just write down. 
Okay. Question two. Which two scriptures did we read? Yes. Don't look at where you wrote. A, Revelations chapter 10, verse 1 to 7, and Exodus chapter 4, verse 1 to 3. We read two scriptures. Last Sunday, Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, and Genesis chapter 98, verse 3 to 8. C, Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, and Genesis chapter 3, verse 24. Write down, don't tell anyone. Have you written down? Just write the answer. Okay, let's continue. Number three, when God separated from man, when God separated from man, who became man's tormentor? Who became man's tormentor? After God separated from man, who became man's tormentor? A, Eve. B, animals. C, Saturn. And D, Cain. Okay. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Don't tell anyone. Don't, don't tell anyone. Okay, let's continue. Number four. Through which way did man start looking for God? Through which way did man start looking for God? A, being good. B, making the environment clean. C, through prayer. And D, drumming and dancing. What did we learn about man looking towards God or man uh, searching for God? Which way? Okay. Let's go to number five. Why does God hide from man? Why? Why does God really have to hide from man? Okay. A, man will beg money from God. B, man was smelling bad. C, man was doing bad manners. And D, man was a sinner. Okay, very good. Oh, no, not yet. So now let's go back and see whether you got the right answer. So number one, the right answer is D. <laughs> God hiding from man. That was our topic. Number two, the right answer is C. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, where God created man. And Genesis chapter 3, verse 24, where he sent them off the Garden of Eden. And there is nothing like Genesis chapter 98. Genesis goes all the way to chapter 50 only. So, <laughs> thank you so much. Okay, number three, the answer is C, Saturn. Yes, when man separated from God, the devil took control. And that's why the, the, he suffered diseases and all that, it's because the devil is his tormentor, right? Number four, the answer is prayer. Okay, we said now that man was not seeing God, he is ever in prayer and faith that God is hearing that prayer, right? Number five, the answer is D, man is a sinner and God can never meet with a sinner, but we'll see how it comes to be a mystery at the end of time, that God is made even seen because of us, but that is a mystery. So now we want to continue from where we left. We just want to look at how God is hiding, right? We want to see how is really God hiding even the time we're living in? How, how, how can we say, God is hiding. 
from us or from people generally. Because even before you become a Christian, God is far away from you, far away. Because, I mean, he is hiding away from you. So we want to see how, how. That is my big question today, just to see together with you, of course, how is God hiding from man? Because what we have been doing, or what we have looked at is every time God, I mean, man realized that, oh no, imagine if I can't get God, oops, I'm done. If I can't get God, I am, I am done. So we want to see, and before that, I just love songs. So I hope we get one song and we're just worshiping. I just want to, you to listen to this one song sung by our precious sister here. And then once we are done with the song, then we'll go to continue with what God is, how man has been looking for God and how God has now revealed himself to this man. Wow. Okay, let's hear from this song and then we continue.
Okay, yes, just a closer walk with thee. No, uh, this is uh, our prayer, a humble prayer, that we just daily walk close to Jesus Christ, right? And why is the prayer? The prayer is because we are all looking unto our Lord. We are all looking unto our Lord, and we just need to walk daily, every hour. Why? Because man was once with God, but then they separated. We got off from our maker. But now it is our humble prayer. That's why I was playing that song. It's our humble prayer. Everyone, even a child, even an adult, even a grandma, even dad, even mom, just to have a closer walk with the Lord. And that is what we are trying to drive to, that one, it even goes beyond a close walk with, walking with God. It goes beyond that. And what you are looking at is how can we bring, how can we unite with our maker? Not just close, because close you are not yet there. So we want to see how can how, how is God coming down and connecting with this man until they walk together as one. So we are going to look at that, and um, I hope you are ready with your pens and all that, just to uh, look into, oh, I see someone here. Who do you think was this? Wow. This is none other than Abraham. So Abraham, once, you know, they lived with Sarah, just two of them. They didn't have children, you know, like, you know, but there's a time they waited upon the Lord and God visited them. But let's see, how did God visit them? Did he come and say, I am the Lord? Yes, no, 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 no. God was hiding in a human body. Okay, there were three angels that came and one of the angels was God himself. And he remained with Abraham while the other two angels went to Sodom and Gomorrah. So how did Abraham see God? Are you sure? Abraham saw the mask, the body in which God was hiding. Because God took over body and came inside of that body. So it wasn't God, that flesh but it was God hiding behind that body. So you see, when he came to visit Abraham, it was God hiding in that body, right? So we can say Abraham did not see God, but he saw the, the flesh, you know, that was carrying or tabernacling the Lord. So when, I, when he said, my Lord, he was not referring to the body, the mask in which, but he, was, he looked beyond the mask. And that's what we need to know. Because one, God is always hiding. So you must know where he is hiding. And where he is hiding, it doesn't mean that is God. Because that is a mask which he is using for that particular time, right? So you have to go beyond the mask and see the Lord himself, right? Okay, so that was Abraham. But let's see. God can also use non-living things. We will see this. God just using any other substance that is not living. God can use anything. You know, God is the creator. So he has all powers to do whatever he would love to. He can hide anywhere. He can hide in a human being. You just see a, a brother that you look at. Mm, and then he just, he, the brother just comes like this. And that is God hiding in simplicity. He can come and he can take on any form. He can come like a cloud. He can come like, a, like fire. And let's see, let's see. So God can take up any mask. Are we together? 
God can take up any mask. And whenever he takes a mask, it means you have to identify him by looking beyond the mask. Wow. So you cannot see God unless otherwise you look beyond the mask that he's using. So let's see. There are so many masks that God has once used, right? He can use any mask because God is the creator and he can decide, okay, today I'm going to use this kind of a mask. Let's see, which mask was this? Yeah. Where is God? This is fire. Do you mean God is fire? A literal fire like flames like this? No, but God was hiding in the fire. And that's why there was voice. Can fire speak? No, it wasn't fire speaking. It was God hiding in fire, right? And that's why it attracted Moses. And Moses was able to see, oh, who is talking? At the same time, he's seeing a bush that is burning, but it's not like becoming ash or charcoal. No, that was the fire of the Lord. That was the mask in which he was hiding. So if you didn't have revelation, you just say, ah, that's a flame, that's a fire. I mean, that's fire. So what about fire? And then you just think it's fire. It wasn't fire. It was God hiding behind the flames, behind that fire, right? So we have seen now, this was God, right? Hiding behind fire. And that was still God. So God, we have said, God can use anything. He can use anything to hide from his people. So other people could just have passed there and say, mm, this man is just looking at the burning bush. So, so what? Excuse me, just a burning bush. But that was God, right? Oh, let me see something here again. Something here. Oops, what's that? Oh, now. I want you to see this again. Now, there is a day, actually is known as the day of Pentecost. God was hiding in, what happened? They were in the upper room. They went in the upper room. And then something happened. I want to see whether you know what happened. Oh, something happened. And it was a great mighty rushing wind. Oh, it came like, Woo! and God was, was the wind God? No, God was hiding behind the great, great wind, right? I don't mean this is the upper room, so you can see maybe this is, no, no, no. But what I mean is, this is a great, great wind that, him blowing until it was written in the scripture, right? So it filled the room. And what happened? What happened is God was behind the wind. Wow. God was behind what? The wind. So it wasn't just wind blowing. It was God hiding behind the wind. And what else? Oh. God can use any mask. Now, there was a man who was born. Oh. Well, listen to that. Oh, who is that? Oh, okay, okay. Oh, let's hear that. Who do you think was that? Oh. Jesus Christ has a... One blind man wow. another. If he does, they will both fall into a ditch. Now, Why do you see the God the was hiding in Jesus Christ. Remember when he was baptized? What happened? What happened when he was baptized? Yes. Oh, wonderful. Imagine Jesus Christ 
he was not just, he was just a boy born like us and we were born. And that's why our prophet tells us, Jesus, the body had a beginning, but the Lord who was in Jesus Christ, wow, he never had a beginning, right? So the body of Jesus Christ became a mask. Wow. And that's why we refer to us the son of man. Why the son of man? He was a body, flesh like my body, okay? He was a body. But Jesus Christ in him, wow, it was God. In him was God. He was doing all the miracles. He was doing everything until he said, wow. So that was Jesus Christ. Until people are wondering, who is this man, right? It is because he was the Lord. Are we together? He was the Lord. Why? Because it was God hiding in that body. Wow. So it was God hiding in human flesh. So we've said God can use anything. He can hide anywhere, right? But at that time, you have to know who God is or where he's hiding. He also was in prophets, right? Like in Moses and all that, it was God still hiding in men of God. So if you fail to identify the prophet of the hour, then you missed it because God was hiding in that prophet, right? Even in church ages, there were messengers, you know, Martin Luther, you know, Columba and all that. They were all masks that God was using, right? And remember, there are two things here that we'll see later about God not seen, like you can't see God, you can't see God. But then there is a way that you can see God, but yet he is not revealed. Okay, it's just like you are seeing someone, but you don't know whether that, that is the person. You're seeing him, but you don't know whether it's the person. So there are two ways that maybe you are seeing God, but yet he is not revealed to you so that you can have confidence that he, by the way, Aki Uyuni Mungu, Aki, I've seen God. Wow. You remember even Paul sometimes he said, oh, no, can you go and find out whether he is really the one? Okay, he really needed the revelation of who is he really the one? Is he okay? So later on, we'll see that God can be seen the way that maybe well, they saw him, they saw Jesus Christ, and all that, but it he was still a mystery. Okay, so seeing God has faces. Okay, you can see part of him and part of him and part of him and part of him until you see him in his fullness, right? So you can see him as the written word. You can see him as the Holy Spirit. But then you must see him as a whole, right? The Spirit, God, the written word, God, the unwritten word. And then now you can say, oh, yes, I know who God is. I have met God. And you can say, surely the heaven and the earth have now met each other, have hugged each other, right? Because you know him. Imagine like when you go to the airport and you're waiting for someone and then the person comes and then you see, oh, he's the one, he's the one. And then you go, you hug him. You can't just hug a stranger there. Maybe you don't know them. But when you realize this is the person I've been waiting for, then that is even sometimes you can see and you say, okay, maybe he is. Let me ask him, are you so and so and so? And then he says, yes. Oh, yes. And then now, you know, you've met the right person. So I think uh, for, for today, we want to stop there and say, next time we'll look at where is he really hiding now? I should have used here big capital, but we'll see where is God now hide, hiding, especially in the time that we are living in, just to know that you have really met him.
So next time, I think we'll, what we'll do is we'll look into where is God hiding now? Because if you don't know where he is, you can't find him. He's hiding. So you have to know where he is, what mask he's using, and he has to reveal himself to you because you might see him and then you find he's another person. Maybe another person is hiding in the same place, like below the bed, beneath the bed or so. And then you say, Birikicho, Bantur, Birikicho, Nikuj, Apan. And then when you come, you find maybe two people hiding. Oh, and then you find it is not the one. So you have to know him. And now at Okinitafuta na unijui, you won't say, oh, niwe, 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 because you don't know me. So you have to know that. But bye-bye for now. And with great sorrow, but comfort in the word, we want also to remember Sunday school children who've lost their pastors. There are Sunday school children who have lost their pastors. And you know, pastor is our greatest teacher in the church in the Sunday school. He's the one who has everything. He is the one who God has placed there to bless the Sunday school and to bless the church. So we're just here on behalf of our pastor. So let's look into, let's look into uh, those who have uh, gone. May we pray for them. And when we pray for them, let's think about it in terms of just comforting them if you are near, near those children. And if you are near, near any child who's lost their loved ones, please just tell them sorry and pray for them. Okay, for now, uh, let us pray as we finish the session for today. Okay, our loving Jesus Christ, we come for that presence again. Lord, may you have mercy upon us. So Father, to find out, Lord, where you are hiding, and oh, Father, that you may reveal yourself to us and that we may know you in the power of your selection. We thank you, Lord, as we come before you, oh, Father, may you continue blessing us, may you continue guiding us, and may you continue manifesting yourself. Talk to our Father to us, talk to our pastor, talk to everyone, oh, Father, that we may know who you are, Lord. May we, uh, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord, and we pray for those, oh, Father, who've lost their loved ones, oh, Father, the churches who've lost their pastors, Lord. Father, may you have mercy upon them. May you comfort them. May you, Lord, oh, Father, just be their comforter, Lord, even the Sunday schools, Lord. May you be with them, Father. We commit them to you as we go, Father. May you be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to uh, play a song here as we go off air just in respect to our pastors who have gone gone to be with the Lord and we know uh, these were great soldiers of the cross uh, but God also loves them so God wants them again and says oh no these are my children these are my children so what we do is we will, we will play this music as we uh, go off air now. Okay, just listen to this and then we, as we end the session today. Amen. Amen. We sing with the glory, hallelujah, jubilee, in that cross of sin forever, 
Amen. Amen.